Good morning and welcome to Riverside Baptist Church. You may notice that things look a little bit different this morning. That's because we are starting our VBS kickoff this morning. Uh, VBS will start later tonight at 6 o'clock to 8.15, June 13th through the 17th. If you're in the area and you want to join us, please come and join us. Uh, for Bible school, we're going from ages 4 to completed 6th grade. For our Bible school, Concrete and Cranes, love to have you come and join us. As we uh, begin this morning, we want to look at Jesus as our strong foundation. And what does that mean? When, when I was a kid, I remember going to Raleigh on a field trip. And when I got there, I was just amazed. All the buildings seemed to reach to the sky. They were so tall to me. Um, and I tried to look to see the very top of the building. And as I did, I fell over backwards because I just wanted to see the top. And I kept leaning back and back further and further, and I fell over. Now, those buildings seemed to me to go for miles and miles into the sky. But looking back on it now that I'm older, they weren't really that tall. I just had never seen anything over three stories before going to Raleigh, the big city. And around the globe today, we have building after building that is competing to be the tallest building and to see who has that honor. Well, I hope I pronounced this correctly. The Burj Khalifa, uh, also known as the Burj Dubai prior to its inauguration in 2010, it's a skyscraper located in Dubai, the United Arab Emirates. And it measures a total height of 2,722 feet tall. And it has a roof height of 2,717 feet tall. Now, the Burj Khalifa has been the tallest structure and building in the world since its topping ceremony in 2009. Now, one thing that the Burj uh, Khalifa and all those buildings that I saw in Raleigh years ago have in common is their need for a strong foundation. Now, the higher and bigger the building, the more need there is for a strong foundation. We, too, are like skyscrapers, and God has been faithful to provide us with a way for us to have a strong foundation as well. And that way for us to have a strong foundation is to build our lives on the personal relationship with him, to have that personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Jesus is our strong foundation. And that's what we're going to be looking at this whole week of Bible school uh, as we dig into God's word to see how we can have that strong foundation. God's also given us his word to help us know that strong foundation and to build it. So how can we know if we have a good foundation in Christ? And what does it look like to have a strong foundation, a personal relationship with Jesus? Well, the Bible is the blueprint. Uh, it shows us how we can do this. And the first thing that we see is that God has provided a way for everyone to experience a relationship with him. God knows that every person is sinful and in desperate need of his forgiveness. Despite that, God loves us anyway. And Romans 3.23 tells us, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory. None of us escape falling into sin. Uh, it, it's in us from the beginning. None of us had to teach our kids how to do wrong. Nobody had to teach us how to do wrong. Our parents didn't send us to school to learn how to be disrespectful and to be dishonest. No, it came naturally. It was in our sin nature. And it's in us from birth. And it displeases God. The price of sin nature in us and the disobedience is death. Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ, our Lord. As we continue to read through Romans, we come to Romans 5.8, and it says that God provided for us, but God proves his own love for us, that in while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. You see, Jesus is God, and he came to live a perfect life and to pay for our sin on the cross. He rose from the grave to prove that he is God, and to show that he has power over sin and over death. You see, for God loved the world in this way. He gave his one and only son so that everyone, everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. In 1 Corinthians 15, verses 3 and 4, we read that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. Jesus is the cornerstone. He is the foundation of the church. In Ephesians 2, 19 through 20, 
It says, so then you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of God's household, built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, with Jesus Christ himself as the cornerstone. You see, Jesus being that foundation is the only way to know God and to have that personal relationship with him. Jesus says in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. You'll hear a lot these days of people saying that there are many ways to God. People will say, well, that path is good for you, but there are many paths, and I'll just take one of those. What we see here from Jesus himself, he says that I am the only way to God. And that it is through me, his son, Jesus Christ, that you can find the Father. Secondly, we see that God's word gives us the blueprints to know him and how to grow in him. God gave us his word, the Bible, because he loves us so much. The Bible is the only source of absolute truth in the world. It's our God. As the psalmist said, it is a lamp that guides my path. God gave us the Bible through the use of human uh, writers that he instructed. In 2 Timothy 3, 16 through 17, we're told that all scripture is inspired by God and is profitable for teaching, for rebuking, for correcting, for training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. 2 Peter uh, chapter 1, verses 20 and 21 says that above all, you know this. No prophecy of Scripture comes from the prophet's own interpretation. Because no prophecy ever came by the will of man. Instead, men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. So the first step for us in building our lives on God's foundation is to be born again. John 3.3, 3, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, unless someone is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So what does it mean to be born again? It's not something that we commonly say in public. It is simply realizing that we are sinners, that we already talked about earlier. It's believing that Jesus died for our sins and placing our trust and faith in him. And once we are forgiven, we begin to grow in Christ. As we grow in Christ, we need to continue to be devoted to God's word so that he, through the Holy Spirit, can help us to grow and build on our foundation. Now, 2 Peter 3.18 tells us that we are to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To Him be the glory both now and to the day of eternity. I also want us to see this morning that God holds us secure in His hand, and He is faithful to forgive. Once we have given our lives to Christ, God's process of growing us and, and making us more like Him lasts a lifetime. In other words, after we become his, we are always his. Philippians 1 6 says, He who started a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Every true believer in Christ can rest assured in knowing that they will enjoy eternal life with him forever. Jesus said in John 10, 10 I have come so that they may have life and have it in abundance. Jesus also said in John 14, 3, I will come again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you may be also. The writer John tells us in 1 John 5, 13, I have written these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. We don't have to guess or wonder uh, if or we can know beyond a shadow of a doubt where we are going to spend eternity. We can know that when we mess up in our walk with God, that he waits for us to return to him. And if we confess our sins, that he is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins, to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. It's the picture of the prodigal son returning home. The father is waiting there with open arms, arms wide open, just waiting for him to come to him. And as soon as we return to God, he restores us. He restores us to that close relationship that we have with him, and that we were designed to enjoy with him. And when we stay in close fellowship with God, he grows us, and he uses us to reach others 
and tell other people about his glory. So this morning, what, or better yet, who in whom is your foundation? It's really simple to start building your foundation on Jesus Christ. The letters A, B, and C we've used for years. I first heard about them in Bible school, in fact. But it, it, it just puts it in a nutshell what it means to have Jesus be our foundation and how to make him our foundation. And ABC stands for admit, believe, confess. First, admit that you're a sinner. The Bible says we're all sinners and need to repent. To repent means simply to turn around, to turn around and change direction, to turn away from our sin and turn towards God. Tell God that you're sorry and that you've messed up in your life and trust him to forgive you of all those times that you've messed up. The second thing is believe. Be. Believe that Jesus Christ is God's Son and receive God's gift of forgiveness for your sins. You must believe that only Jesus can save you. There is nothing that you can do on your own that can save yourself. We don't have the power to forgive our sins. Only God can do that. Third is confess. Confess your faith in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Tell God and tell others what you believe. And that means sharing that you've trusted Jesus to be your Savior and that He is now in charge of your life and you're seeking to follow His will for everything that you do. So it's, a, it's simple. ABC. Admit that you are a sinner. Believe that Jesus is God's Son and confess that He is your Savior and Lord. As I said, it's as simple as ABC. But this morning I want to add a, one other letter to that. It doesn't save you, but it's something that you need to do after this. And that is D for discipleship. That's a fancy term that simply means that you want to keep learning more about Jesus. That means you read your Bible, you pray regularly, you get involved in a church that is preaching and teaching God's Word. You're not really in a relationship if you do not learn more about the other person or only use them in times of trouble. So in, we need to build that relationship with Jesus. We need to spend time with Him. And we do that by being in His Word and worshiping corporately with other people together. So this morning, have you chosen to encounter Jesus? I'm going to ask everybody if they would to bow their heads. Maybe you're here this morning and this is the first time you've, you've heard how to become a Christian or how to be a follower of Christ. It's a personal decision. Nobody can make that decision for you. I can't force you to accept Christ as your Lord and Savior. I wish I could. Because the benefits so much outweigh the negatives. But maybe you're here this morning and the Lord is talking with you. Maybe you're sitting at home watching this or wherever you may be. And you're unsure. Or you think that it's Bible school. It's just for kids. It's just for those ages four to grade, complete a grade six. It's not. It's for everybody. Every one of us. No matter how old you may be or how young you may be, God is calling all to come. To him. Jesus came and died on the cross and he rose from the dead so that you could have an eternal relationship with him. So, have you made that choice to follow him? He's waiting with open arms for you. All you have to do is come to him. In a moment, we're going to have a time of response here. And you can respond to God in your seat. You can respond at your home if you're watching this. You can respond wherever you may be. If you need to, come down to the front and pray. Pray where you are. Grab a friend to come with you. Call someone and have them pray with you over the phone even if you're uh, at home. But whatever you do, do not let this moment pass you by if God is calling you. Because now is the time and now is the place, wherever you may be, to settle that relationship with Jesus Christ. We're not promised what's going to happen later today or later this week. We are only promised right here right now. So have you settled that relationship with God? Have you figured out what's going to happen to you for eternity? I pray that you have. Let's pray this morning. As we get ready to sing during this time of response, Lord, please remove any distractions and help us to focus only on you. It's my prayer that each of us can truly say that we build our life on you, Lord Jesus. It's in your name that we pray. Amen.